blessed love. I am the Honorable Priest Isaac. I am an official priest within the realms of Rastafari of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. I also hold a certification in the craft of Accio Astronomy from Politecnico de Milano in Italy. Our universe and its maker has always been an intriguing subject for humankind. Astronomy is the study of everything in the universe beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Ancient astronomy is similar but pays special attention to the physical and spiritual values of stars, planets, moons, and other celestial objects. It also brings in the terrestrial component, being things on an earthly plane, such as plants, human organs, and connects them to the heavenly bodies. In this course, you will learn the makeup of various planets and stars, how to locate them in the night sky, along with their associated constellations. You will also be taught about the earliest civilizations known for their astronomical comprehension, namely Kush, also known as ancient Ethiopia, Kemet, called Egypt today, the Dogans, and the Bozos, as well as the civilization of Sumer. You will also learn about black holes, their nature and origin, as well as how the ancients viewed them. Ancient astronomy is the mother of archaeoastronomy and astrotheology. Both subject areas are covered by the Priest Isaac's Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Sign up today. Visit our website priestisaacinstitute.com or email us priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com for more information. Blessed love to each and every one. Greeting, salamta. We give thanks to Negus and Agas. Glorify him for Haile Selassie I. Of course, you know, the Honorable Priest Isaac here with you, representing the Priest Isaac's Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And of course, family, it is a joy that you are with us once again. Now, we had a wonderful program previous evening, what people call last night, on the tiger's nest. Hmm. We began the series of programs that we promised we would have begun, uh, directly uh, taking a look and analyzing the brand new documentary, Grandpa Was an Emperor. And of course, we're going to continue that analysis this upcoming Monday evening, of course, on the Tiger's Nest on Radio Anu. And of course, let me make it clear, Radio Anu is the media arm of the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And of course, I will just ask you to visit our website, which is priestisaacinstitute.com. And there you will find Radio Anu and so many other things that will definitely add to what is taking place in your growth. Remember, the Tiger's Nest radio program comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 7 p.m. again on Radio Anu. In fact, the link to the description for the website uh, 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 or the link to the website is in the description below this video so it makes it very simple all you got to do is go down and press the link and you're right there on radio anu now of course what i wanted to touch upon is the special relationship between bob marley the legendary reggae icon and the granddaughter of Emperor Haile Selassie I. This is um, Princess Yeshi, and she was the 
the chief narrator of the documentary, Grandpa Was an Emperor. Now, I'm just going uh, to, to speak about what I would have heard on the documentary. I cannot add anything else than what she would have expressed on the documentary. But of course, we are going to go much more deeper into it on Monday when we meet for the Tiger's Nest on Radio Anu. But before we go there, of course, I just want to highlight to each and every one, let me first say uh, uh, a lot of appreciation. We do appreciate love. Each and every one who would have already signed up and enrolled themselves in our ancient astronomy course. Family, I'm encouraging each and every one that has a you know, an interest in astronomy and just knowledge in general. In fact, if you have an interest in theology and all of this knowledge stuff in Egypt and Kemet and Bible and all of that, well, that means you are a seeking scholar and you should be a part of our ancient astronomy course. Obviously, it's very inexpensive. It's only $275. I mean, the fact that we said hundreds, eh? If you really comprehend the, the, uh, the, the, the value, quantity, and quality of this course that we would have produced, some of you have seen samples of it. And I think the samples speak for themselves. Even the promotion of it, you could see the, the quality of the presentation that you will be getting, those of you who are not enrolled as yet. In fact, let me just give you a good idea of how you can enroll yourself. But at this time, we are definitely branching off now. I want you to hear this good. Eh? We are branching off now to the ancient astronomy, ancient archaeo astronomy course. I want you to listen to me good. When you visit the website, which is priestisaacinstitute.com, of course, you could see us on the website here. You go to the area uh, marked courses. And when you go into courses now, this is going to take you to the different courses. Now, of course, you have the ancient astronomy course, as you could see it here. You could just add it to cart and you go through. But right now, family, I want you to listen to me good. Because what I'm going to show you now is something that you're going to have to put your mind to and prepare for. We will be hosting an ancient archaeo astronomy studication course. Now, in the very near future, I'm going to do a whole program or series of programs speaking about this. But I'm just giving you a quick idea today in the interest of time. On the sixth day of November, we will begin our ancient, not just ancient astronomy, ancient archaeoastronomy course. This is going to be taking place right here in Antigua. In fact, it is Green Castle Hill. Many of you would have heard me speak about Green Castle Hill. Some of you would have already come to Antigua and experienced Green Castle Hill. Many of you would have already followed us to Green Castle Hill virtually. So you have a good idea of what Green Castle Hill, Mount Anu, is all about. Countless of megaliths that align with the astronomical clock. Well, I do dare say that Green Castle Hill more than Stonehenge, even the pyramids, is, is the premier archaeoastronomical site for obvious reasons. It's natural. It has been there longer than any of them. The rocks protrude out of the earth. No one came and put them in a ring. So it's a natural alignment with the natural heavens and the natural stars, planets, moon, and sun. So when you come to Antigua on the 6th of November, we're going to have several days of classes. And then after that, we will be going to Green Castle Hill for several nights of star watching and alignments where you will see how the, the heavens, you know, coordinate with the rocks that are naturally up there on Green Castle Hill. This is very, very important. So all you have to do now, family, just quickly, you visit the website, you get all the information, 
You can see me here on the website. It gives you the days and the, the literal dates, of course, from, let's say, the 6th of November. And, of course, it carries you all the way to the 15th of November when you will have your graduation. So family, I'm telling you, all you got to do is to go on the website and check out the information for yourself. Uh, the course itself, very inexpensive again. And if you, the earlier that you enroll for the course, it is the, the, the better price, at least for your budget, that you will receive. This is ancient archaeoastronomy. I do dare say, family, this is unlike any other course that is being taken when it comes to the ancient astronomy and archaeoastronomy craft. This is Green Castle Hill. Here. There's nobody on Green Castle Hill studying Green Castle Hill. Here. And Green Castle Hill is unlike any other hill on the planet. Anyway. I will leave all of that for another program. <laughs> Let us go into what we wanted to uh, touch upon. But remember, family, just visit the website. And of course, you could do you know, your best to be a part of this initiative that is uh, taking place. Now, of course, as I said, we did a wonderful program previous evening. Uh, we went into the documentary, Grandpa Was an Emperor. Uh, of course, many ones considered that Many ones who are listening haven't seen it as yet. And they already are considering that, you know, it was very touching and emotional, to say the least. Of course, as I said, it is really narrated by one of the granddaughters of the emperor herself. She would not have seen the worst of the terror that took place when the derg took over Ethiopia, but she would have definitely done her, 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 her diligent search and research, you know, the, speaking to her own family members, her close family members, family members that she wouldn't have seen for a long time. You pick up all of this in the documentary. Uh, uh, friends of her father, who basically is one of the key characters in this documentary. I mean, he would have passed since the 70s, but but he would have been like one of the, the, the spotlight would have been on him in this documentary, to be honest, more than maybe anyone else. That's her father. This is the princess Yishi's father. Uh, he was the former head of the university and also a minister of agriculture. And in fact, he was the minister of agriculture at the time when this great famine and, and all of that was taking place in Ethiopia. And the, the fellow that um, worked for the international news agency that came into Ethiopia and, and, and has been credited for spreading all the propaganda, he also is in the documentary. And he said that, yes, there was... It was a real bad case of, of, of you know, famine that he saw. But it is the Derg, what became the Derg that took his report and fabricated it in such a way to make it appear as if it was the Emperor Haile Selassie I who was the cause of the drought and the cause of the famine and, and was to be blamed and he was eating and, and drinking and feeding lions and having a birthday party while the people are dying. And it's interesting, you know, that when I was younger, that was the main thing the old people would say about Haile Selassie, even before I was racing before anything about Selassie was a great interest or an interest at all, you would just hear the old people say, who? Oh, Selassie? Selassie feed his lion, all ah, good, good food. I have the people them starving, just that, you know? And, and, and you would always hear that. They don't say that much now. I guess most of them people have died off. But I definitely would have received that. I've been, I would have been the recipient of that sort of talk and conversation. And it came from propaganda, like what has been spread by the international news agencies. And even the same um, gentleman on the documentary, 
he himself came out, they, they gave you his report. And you saw him when he was younger and he was walking amongst the starving people. So he was there. But he's saying, yeah, he was there and he saw it, but it was not like how Mengustu and the Derg brought it out. He said that even now in his old age. So even when you check the documentary, you will see that. And those who were listening previous night, you would have heard that as well. A few other interesting things that we touched upon uh, previous night, and we kind of sealed up just at the brink of when the sister now, the princess, spoke of her 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 encounter for the first time with reggae music and her encounter with Bob Marley, and it was at a reggae show uh, in London. She said she never heard reggae, and um, she never knew about Bob Marley. And she said when she went into when she went into the the the, the hall the stadium where the, the show was being kept, she saw a big picture of Haile Selassie on the back, on the back um, wall. You know, the big picture with the crown that Bob Marley always has when he's performing. And she said, wait, that's my grandfather or grandpa. And she said, Bob was chanting, ja! And everyone was responding, Rastafari. And she said, but wait, that's, that's grandpa's, title Rastafari before he became emperor etc etc she met Bob uh, the very same evening you don't know this is the emperor's granddaughter so she met Bob the very same evening and and uh, she said when she went in the room it was a lot of you know smoking of I think the term she used was pot and uh, they, 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 they asked her so many things about her, her, her father's concept of God and and if she ever saw her, her grandfather, pardon me, how he ate and if she ever saw him eating and what he was eating, you know how it is, you know, Ras is one, you know, exactly how the king of kings, you know, used to flex, et cetera, et cetera. And she was saying that they were showing her that, hey, your grandfather is God. And she was like, no, 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 what are you talking about? That's, in, that's impossible. And I would assume she didn't go into all of that. But from that time, this would have been obviously in the 70s. You know, Bob Marley would have um, died in 81, isn't it? So this had to be 70s, late, late 70s. We don't know what happened. Ethiopia, uh, the overthrow 74, 75, 76. 77 so it got to be somewhere around this time frame i don't think we got the exact date on the documentary because what happened after that she would have bonded with uh brother bob she would have formed a very strong bond with him she even got emotional in the documentary you know she referred to him as I think the first love or the first love of her life. So, I mean, you you could use your imagination any which way you want to carry it. But she definitely said that, you know, uh, Bob Marley would have assisted her, counseled her, called her every day in the long-standing relationship, basically until he died. And I think that um, many individuals would not have known of, that special bond and i don't want to let me say again she definitely showed emotion in the documentary i'm not putting nothing in her mouth she clearly said he he she considered him not only the the love of her life but i think the first you know and um many 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 ones are very I wouldn't say skeptical of Bob Marley. Bob Marley's lifestyle would have just shown you who Bob Marley was. There's nothing to deny in that. You know, Bob Marley, as they would say, you know the song, Mia Gallis? <laughs> you know that song, right? That's what it is. Nobody in the world can deny that. You can profit Bob Marley all you want. Everyone know who is in denial here. All right, but I'm not saying, I don't know how far that relationship would have gone. I'm not even uh, trying to insinuate anything, but I cannot overlook how emotional the sister really was. 
And um, she clearly said it with her own mouth, how she felt about him. Because she said she don't know how he felt about her. But that's how, you know, she felt about him. But anyway, as I said, what we will do on Monday in the Tiger's Nest, we will be continuing from there because I, I, I consider that the, the, um, the analysis of this timely documentary is quite important and it adds certain level of reality to, you know, Haile Selassie's reign and our outlook on the full picture, not just him, but all that would have surrounded him, etc. I think it would have done great justice to that for us to sit down and speak about it. I, I, I personally full joyed the Tiger's Nest previous night, as they say, last night. And in fact, on, on Saturday evening, Saturday evening, so this is after the Sabbath now, Saturday evening, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so you could write this down for those of you who missed the Tiger's Nest last night, previous night, Saturday evening, 7 p.m. on Radio Anu, not on YouTube now, on Radio Anu, we will be rebroadcasting that special first um, program in the series of programs directly covering Grandpa Was an Emperor. So if you missed it last night, previous night, and you're not a subscriber, I don't know why you're not a subscriber. You should be a subscriber to the Tiger's Nest, and then you wouldn't have to worry about nothing being rebroadcast. But if you're not a subscriber, you know, you should subscribe. It's an easy thing to do. Just contact us and let us know, hey, I would like to be a subscriber to the Tiger's Nest program. And that means you will never miss another episode again. Good. So 7 p.m. tomorrow evening, Saturday evening, I'm speaking of after the Sabbath day, 7 p.m. We will rebroadcast that first in the series of the, you know, analyzing Grandpa Was an Emperor. But Monday now, same 7 p.m. Monday for the first Tiger's Nest of the Strong, we will be definitely looking, uh, continuing, definitely even from this perspective as it relates to the relationship that Bob had with the sister. And when I say relationship, again, we're highlighting the struggle, eh? the struggle. Just I'm just being uh, open with the words and her expression. But the main thing is we are highlighting what she would have gone through because, again, the documentary highlights a lot, you know, escape from, from, from captivity and, and so many different things and, and the part that even Bob Marley would have played. So let us definitely join together Monday and get some more vibration. And again, family, just check out the website. The link is in the description below. So many other things you can check on the website. Remember, Radio Anu is continually, you know, streaming for you. The international flavor, the universal spice, definitely always full of good information and inspiration. So again, this principles go properly organized. All right, something good going on here on Radio Anu. All right. This the like third it. area. The 1960s, of course, was a mobilized area and is a mobilized oh, that's a good brother, Kwame Toure. Yeah, man, somebody good always on the uh, radio and who giving us some good information. Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Toure. So if you jump on radio and right now, you might be getting, you know, a little bit of um, Stokely Carmichael. Family, give thanks for your presence with us. Give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. Will Emmanuel Celestia. Ja Rastafari. Blessed love. Hmm. Blessed love. I am the Honorable Priest Isaac. I am an official priest within the realms of Rastafari of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. I also hold a certification in the craft of Accio Astronomy from Politecnico de Milano in Italy. Our universe and its maker has always been an intriguing subject for humankind. Astronomy 
is the study of everything in the universe beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Ancient astronomy is similar but pays special attention to the physical and spiritual values of stars, planets, moons, and other celestial objects. It also brings in the terrestrial component, being things on an earthly plane, such as plants, human organs, and connects them to the heavenly bodies. In this course, you will learn the makeup of various planets and stars, how to locate them in the night sky, along with their associated constellations. You will also be taught about the earliest civilizations known for their astronomical comprehension, namely Kush, also known as ancient Ethiopia. Kemet, called Egypt today, the Dogans, and the Bozos, as well as the civilization of Sumer. You will also learn about black holes, their nature and origin, as well as how the ancients viewed them. Ancient astronomy is the mother of archaeoastronomy and astro theology. Both subject areas are covered by the Priest Isaac's Institute of Holistic Knowledge. Sign up today. Visit our website priestisaacinstitute.com or email us priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com for more information.